Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at an NES game called Wacky Races, which is based after the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Now, before we start talking about the game, try and take a guess of one thing. What type of game is this? Well, you know, the game is called Wacky Races, so, um, it has to be a racing game, right? <coughs> Wrong. It's a platformer. God damn it, I should have known. Well, anyways, so the game was developed and published by Atlas, which may explain why this game is so unexpected, and it was released in 1992 in North America, making it a pretty late NES entry. And another thing I should add that makes this game so different is that you're actually using the bad guys in this game. Yeah, you play as Muttley in this game, you know, the dog that was sidekicks with Dick Dastardly, and in this game you gotta fuck over the good guys. I have to say, I really do like the idea of playing as the bad guys and trying to screw over the good guys. It's very different, and you don't see it that often. I'm still waiting for a Mario game where you play as Bowser and you gotta take out Mario. That'd be great. But anyways, as for the story in this game, there's not a whole lot to it other than you're just using Muttley and trying to take out the good guys. And same thing with Dick as well, so, you know, there's not a whole lot to explain about. And of course, there are a couple cutscenes, but it's nothing all that important. Then again, the cartoon itself didn't really have like an epic story either, so it works fine as that. So now, as for the gameplay, like I already addressed, it's a platformer, and you take control of Muttley and you chomp people. You also collect diamonds for points and one-ups, and you collect bones for upgrades, and here's the thing that's really interesting about this game. The way how you upgrade in this game is a lot like Gradius, where you have your set number of skills that you can acquire, and when you collect enough bones, you can just press select and you get that skill. So there is the bomb skill, which you just throw bombs in an arc angle. Then there's the bark of death, which just shoots the words bow in a straight line. The wings make you glide so you slow down in thin air. And the hearts refill your health. It also adds extra heart containers, but the maximum you can have is 6. So it's a pretty interesting mechanic to have in a platformer like this. But I did forget to mention that you can actually select the level that you want, so you can pick from Hip Hop, Splish Splash, or Go Go America. The first three routes have three stages each, and then the last one has four stages. So you just gotta get from point A to point B, then you gotta fight a boss at the end, and the bosses are all characters that appear in the show. And usually the boss's patterns start out to be very easy, and then after a while it gets a lot faster and more challenging. But I will say, overall, the game is actually not too hard. But I'd say it's the bosses that do get pretty challenging and tricky. But it's definitely not impossible or frustrating. But the regular stages are not too hard, except for the water levels. But considering this is a Nintendo game with a water level, of course it has to be a pain in the ass. But I'd say the game is reasonable and pretty forgiving. So now, let's take a look at other things, like the controls. They're very easy to understand, and the button layout works great, and of course I do find it to be responsive. But I do have two small complaints, and they are... Gliding with your tail is jumping with the B button, but then you keep on tapping it rapidly to keep going. No, yeah, it's simple, but it just gets annoying after a while. Personally, what I would have done is that you just press it once, and then you just hold it again. I think that just would have made it much more easier rather than just having to tap the shit out of it while you're in the air. And the second complaint I do have is that I do find that the bark does feel a little bit delayed. But it's nothing too horrible, it's just something that's just very noticeable. But other than those two things, I think the controls work great and very responsive. Now as for the game's graphics, I think they look pretty nice. It's very bright and colorful, and it definitely suits the game very well. It has that cartoony style, which is what this game is trying to be. You know, a game based after a cartoon. The level design is not too bad. It's very straightforward, but I think it works fine. And there is some variety of different areas. And all the characters do look very recognizable, and some of the monsters do look pretty funny in this game. So when it comes to graphics, I think this game does look very nice looking. Now as for the game's music, I actually find it to be very catchy, meaning that I think it's pretty good. So I find the music does suit the game very well, and I find it to be very well composed. There's really nothing bad I can really say about the music in this game. Sure, they do recycle a couple songs on a few stages, but that's not a big deal for me. So overall, when it comes to music, I really like it a lot. Now, if you want to buy this game, this is the painful part, because this game is pretty insane. So just from doing an eBay search, this game is apparently now at $400. Like, what the fuck happened here? I remember the last time I've seen this game in a store at my old place. They were selling a loose copy for $125. Now, yes, that is a lot of money just to play one game, but that's definitely a lot better than 400. 
but unfortunately there's not many listings at the moment and this is not a game I see very often so yeah good luck. Even the Japanese version isn't cheap, it's like $80 about there. But I think I'd rather pay $80 than $400. Or if you really want to go to the cheap route, you can just always get one of those pirated games like I found one called Harry's Story The New Harry Potter, which is apparently a very similar game to Wacky Races just with a palette swap. Or if you want to be like me and go through the cheapest route possible, then that's just emulating the fucker. But if you want to own a physical copy of the game, it's pretty damn tough. And it's very unfortunate because not only is this game pretty fun, but it was also a show that I grew up watching as a kid. So I do have some nostalgia for the show. Now obviously I didn't watch the show when it first aired, but I remember Teletoon used to play reruns. So if I knew that there was an NES game at the time, I would have actually been all over it. But oh well, shit happens. Now if I were to rate this game, I'm gonna have to give it an 8 out of 10. Now I am being a little bit generous here and that's probably because of the fact that this game is kind of a run of the mill platformer. But I really like some of the ideas that it has, such as playing as the bad guys and of course there's a power up system. But the game is definitely very well made, it just may not be the most challenging thing you'll ever play. And I do wish the game did have more levels. But thinking about it in another perspective, if you're playing this game as a kid, this would definitely be right for you because this game was targeted towards kids because, you know, it's based after a cartoon show. So if you're playing this as a kid, the difficulty is definitely right. Because I know a lot of problems with games that are based after kid shows. A lot of them are way too fucking hard. And not only just with kids, but even for adults. The best example I can think of off the top of my head would be The Lion King. God damn it, that game pissed me off as a kid. And then there'd be that odd time where a kid's game would be way too easy, just like Puss in Boots on NES. But this game, I'd say it's a perfect balance for kids. But even playing this game as an adult, I still had some good time fun with it. So that's why I'm giving it an 8, because it was fun, and it was pretty well made. Sure, it does have some minor issues, but it was nothing that really got in the way of the enjoyment. So with that being said, this is definitely a cartoon license game that was handled great. And you just gotta love Atlas for coming up with some weird ideas that are actually really good. Now before I end it here, there are some other games that are based after Wacky Races. There was one game that did come out around the same time as this one on the Atari ST, but it's an entirely different game and made by a different developer. Then there's one that came out in the 2000s that came out on the Dreamcast, the PS1, and the Game Boy Color. And yes, that one is indeed a racing game. And then there were two games that were released on the PS2, but they were only in Europe and Australia. And finally, there was one that was released on the DS and the Wii. So hopefully sometime in the future I can take a look at these. But getting a hold of the two PS2 games might be a bit tough, but you never know. So anyways, that'll be the end of this review, and I enjoyed this game quite a bit. So with that being said, thanks for watching and commenting.